I can't even tell you, but I am going to try how excited I am to do this video for you and to share what I think are the best five vintage collections from Coach. Bonus, I will also share a sixth one that's not vintage yet, but I think it deserves a mention in light of some of the other collections I'll be sharing. And I want to get to these five collections as quickly as possible. However, I do feel the need to share a little bit of a preamble here, because if any of you are interested in learning more about vintage Coach, I want to warn you about that, because this has been one of the most difficult videos I've ever made. Some of you may remember a few years ago when I first discovered a certain era of vintage coach, bags from the 70s, 80s, 90s, bags such as this. I went on a spree of learning and shopping and I purchased a bunch of these. This particular one is the stewardess bag. The strap is tucked inside in the color British tan. And I have several more pieces that let me know in the comment section if you'd like me to do a vintage coach collection at some point. I learned a lot about those bags a few years ago. So coming into this, this renewed interest in vintage coach that I'm having at the moment, I thought I knew a thing or two. And I quickly learned. I was wrong. I think when people think vintage coach, they think of bags like that stewardess bag, but there is so much more to it. And by the way, I am using the term vintage a little bit loosely here. I know that technically something has to be 20 years old to be considered vintage and then 100 years old to be considered antique. Now I was Googling that last night because those numbers, they sound fairly arbitrary to me. It sounds like somebody made that up for some reason in order to identify things or label things. Um, I think that is probably what happened, that those terms are used when selling older pieces. And so those guidelines were put in place for that reason. But otherwise, I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of using those words is because they don't really mean anything other than different stages of old right? So of the five collections I'm sharing, three are over 20 years old and the other two are close to it. And I have spent the last week doing a deep, deep dive into these vintage coach collections. And these five that I'm going to share really stood out to me. And when I say that I have spent the last week working on this, my normal schedule is that I get up around 5 a.m. and I go to bed between 9 and 10-ish. I've still been getting up at 5 and I tend to work through most of that period. This past week I've still been getting up at about 5, but several nights I've stayed up a lot later than I usually do. Last night I was up until 2 in the morning and it's because from the second I wake up to the second I go to sleep, I have been working on this, and I mean that literally. That's all I have been doing for every waking moment, pretty much, for the last week, little more than a week. And the reason for that is that I kept running into issues trying to research Vintage Coach. And I was actually supposed to film this video four days ago, but I didn't feel like I was ready yet. There were still bits of information that were missing, and I wanted to continue my research and find that information. And it's little things like the year a collection was released, but finding that information much more difficult than you might think. And that's because it's been very difficult to find comprehensive and accurate information on vintage coach collections. I've run across all kinds of contradictions. I will talk about a few of those in this video. In order to find accurate information on collections and on specific bags, things like the official name of the bag, the sizes, the colors, the materials it came in, the style number, which is important in Coach, you really need to reference the Coach catalogs. And that was probably my biggest challenge this week. And I'll talk more about that later when we get to the collection where I really needed them. Each of these five collections I feel like really deserves its own video. So if you are interested in seeing a dedicated video on any of these five collections or on other collections, please let me know in the comment section below. I've been so interested in this, so excited about it. And that's why I'm able to work every waking minute and not do anything else because I get really passionate about these things and I want to learn everything that I can learn. And by the way, welcome. I'm Autumn Beckman and I am here to help you 
live your most luxurious life within your budget. We talk about everything from handbags to everyday luxuries, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, or my daily community posts, and that's where I share sales and fabulous finds like some of these vintage coach bags. Also don't miss my website, autumnbeckman.com. That's where you can pick up items that I have personally designed for you to help you curate and organize a purposeful collection of your most treasured pieces. For example, my My Handbag Collection Planner. This is the front and back of the item tracker page where you can track all the information you would need for each of your handbags or your small goods. I'm also, let me know if you'd be interested in this, I'm thinking of designing an item tracker page that is specifically for Coach because they have a few things that other bags don't have. And let me know if you not only are interested in that, but if interested in that for other brands, tell me what other brands in the comments below. And since we're looking at some vintage collections over time, it is important to have just a few bits of Coach history, a few milestones. So we probably already know Coach was established in 1941 by six artisans in a leather factory. And then 20 years later in 1961, Lillian and Miles Kahn purchased Coach and then they hired Bonnie Cash in that same year. This is where I ran into a contradiction because I saw in one place that they hired her in 1961 and another 62, so I don't know which one is correct. Coach says it was 1961, but as we'll learn later, Coach is not always correct about their own history either. So Bonnie Cashin was hired as their creative director. She was there from 1961 through 1974. And so many iconic things about Coach were developed under Bonnie Cashin's reign. And one of the interesting things about Coach, one of the things that I love about them, I think a lot of you love about them, and I think this has been true over most of the time that Coach has been around, there are really cheap, bags that you can get at places like Target and Walmart. And then there are the expensive luxury brand bags that are out of reach for a lot of people. Coach, from what I understand, was the first company to fill that gap where they made high quality handbags but at much more affordable prices. So basically, Coach is what my channel is about, luxury on a budget. And one thing that surprised me as I was doing all this research is I've always had this stigma, and I think a lot of people do, about this era of Coach when they got into their signature CCs that were on the jacquard print and they were just everywhere. It seemed like every Coach bag had the big CCs all over them and, and they were just saturated in the market and they had moved production to China and a lot of people have this stigma around the coach signature and made in China bags. Well, what I found is that the Made in China pieces started a lot earlier than I realized. So three of the five collections today that I'm sharing with you and that bonus one are all made in China pieces, but they're also high quality pieces that are definitely worth knowing about and checking into if you're not familiar with them yet. And that just kind of blew my mind. Not because I think there's anything wrong with made in China, I've done videos about that before, but just because of the stigma. And the last thing to note before we finally dive into these five collections is that Coach has a very distinct history of referencing their own history. And a lot of the things that they reference I'm finding came from the Bonnie Cashin era. They do a lot of remakes of earlier bags. They also use a lot of the same elements repeatedly in order to reference their past. And I find that fascinating because I'm not sure I necessarily see that, at least as often, with other companies. And I'm a little surprised, and you guys correct me if you feel like I'm wrong about that, but I'm, I'm a little surprised that some of the luxury brand houses don't do it as much as Coach does. They definitely have a strong heritage in the designs of their bags, and it's something they relish in. All right, Coach Vintage Collection number one. And usually I will link all the bags that I mention in the description box below, but that's very difficult to do with some of these collections. So what I will do is put a few links to places where you can find bags from the collection, and then you can search to see what works for you. Collection number one is the Bonnie Cashin era. So again, she was with Coach from 1961 to 1974. Two interesting things I learned about her. She worked for about 85 different fashion houses over her career. She's perhaps best known for working with Coach, but she also worked with Hermes. And when you see her designs, I'm not the slightest bit surprised that she worked with Hermes. I, If I didn't know that she worked with Coach, 
coach, my guess would have been she was with Hermes because her designs are elegantly minimal, is how I would describe it. Also, there was this trend in the last couple of years, maybe it's still going on, I have no idea, but we saw this on the runways where people would be carrying a large bag, like a tote bag, and then they'd have a smaller bag, so they'd be carrying two bags at a time. Did you know? I did not. Bonnie Cashin is the one who came up with that idea. It was all about women entering the workforce at that time and carrying their handbag, but also a work bag. And speaking of that side note, as I was learning about Coach, I was finding so many things that I thought were recent developments in the handbag world, and it turns out Coach did them decades ago, and that blew my mind. One of them is tiny handbags. Did you know they did that? You can definitely find Bonnie Cashin bags on the pre-loved market. However, these are going to be some of the most expensive coach bags that you'll find. The typical range that I saw was about $700 up to a thousand-ish from most bags, but I saw some that were about $4,000. Cashin introduced brighter colors to Coach. They had previously been using more neutral colors. She introduced a brightly striped interior to some of the bags. She introduced the turn lock, which has become iconic to Coach, and the kiss lock, and other hardware. Hardware, by the way, is a very important thing in Coach collections. It often defines the collection. Her first line with Coach was introduced in 1962. It was called the Cash and Carry line. This is one of the contradictions that I had trouble really defining because I've seen so many different kinds of bags called the Cash and Carry. So I finally saw something that said that was her first collection. So I don't think it defines just one bag. It's multiple bags that fall under that umbrella. Some examples of her bags are the Skinny Tote, some people also call it the slim tote. The watermelon tote with the kiss lock on the front. Shopper totes like this. The body bag. This is something I could see Hermes making. And then there are totes with the skinny handles. This is not a Bonnie Cashin era bag. This is much more recent. It's a re-edition of a Cash and Carry tote though, with these really slim handles. One example of Coach referencing its own heritage. And Coach continued making Bonnie Cashin era handbags, or Bonnie Cashin style handbags, bags long after she had departed the company. I saw some Bonnie Cashin bags as late as the holiday collection of 2000. Vintage collection number two. What we traditionally think of when we think of vintage coach bags like the stewardess that I showed earlier. These bags were produced from about the 1970s. I'm not sure what was done before that. I couldn't find enough information on that. And they were produced all the way up until about 2001. I saw them in catalogs that late. At least some of the styles. These bags are defined by a very soft, supple, vegetable tanned leather that is unlined, so it just has the suede on the other side. It has solid brass hardware, a lot of them have turn locks, and it was during this time that the Coach Creed was introduced. Not the story patch yet, because this was just stamped directly into the leather. As you can see there, the Creed told you where the bag was made. Originally, all Coach bags were made in their factory in New York City, then they expanded to other factories in the US, and then they started expanding to other countries around the world. My stewardess says it was made in Mexico. Depending on the creed and how old it is, some of them also give you the style number and tell you what year the bag was made. And the older creeds also tell you that they're made of a glove tanned leather. I said vegetable dyed a second ago. Those can both be true at the same time, right? If that's incorrect information, let me know. The information on the coach creed and the story patch have changed over time. And then sometimes they say different things for special edition bags too. Some examples of bags from this time period besides the stewardess are the classic pouch, which which sounds like it's a little pouch, but it's actually a shoulder bag. The duffel sack, arguably the most iconic coach bag ever. The dinky bag, which is another coach classic that has gone through tons of iterations. And the crescent, which is one of the most sought after and one of the most expensive bags you will find on the pre-love market. Vintage coach collection number three is the Soho collection. And this is where I ran into the most issues with catalogs. And this is where much of the time in my last week has been spent, is finding complete, accurate, legible information about Coach catalogs. There are a few different resources available. I will link them below, but I'm going to point out of the three that I list, 
the most helpful, which I wish I had found when I first started looking for catalogs, but I only found it yesterday, which is this one website that has like a hundred coach catalogs from 1960 up until I think it goes to about 2007-ish, somewhere around there, maybe 2008, maybe even a little farther than that. And they don't have every catalog, but they have a lot of them. And they've all been put into PDF form where you just open one document per catalog and you can scroll through it and they're high resolution images. So you can zoom in and actually read most of the text. Had I had this days ago, it would have saved me so much time and frustration because the other resources are much more piecemeal and much more difficult to access the information and read the information. The other source that has uploaded photos of catalogs was a real headache to deal with and took much more of my time than I wish it had. But anyway, now that I have this resource on my computer because I downloaded all of this and I've been able to flip through some of these catalogs digitally. The Soho Collection. Now this is a collection that is nostalgic for me because my very first coach bag was from the Soho Collection and my dream coach bag at the time was from the Soho Collection. So my first bag was this one, the Soho Flap Bag. It was in black leather. It came in two sizes. Mine was the smaller size. I got it at a coach outlet. I think I paid 70 or $90, somewhere around there, and that was a fortune for me at the time. I was in college living in New York. Got it at Woodbury Commons, and I loved that bag. At some point in the last 10 years or so, I sold it and kind of wish I hadn't, because Coach recently re-released new editions of the Soho bag. And something I want to point out, one of the contradictions I ran into is that on the current listing on the Coach website for the newly released Soho bag, they say that the original Soho bag was released in 2006. And they are wrong because I was looking at those Coach catalogs. And there are a couple of pieces of information that you should know if you're interested in the Soho collection. First of all, I thought the Soho Collection was introduced around 2006-ish. No, it was actually introduced in the 90s. Now, it developed over time, and this is one of the things that is so, so frustrating if you are trying to learn about Vintage Coach and trying to make sense of it in your head or even on paper. I have a big old spreadsheet going. I'm, I'm a spreadsheet person. One of the frustrating things with Coach is they will use the same terminology for different things. I ran into this so often. The Soho Collection started in the 90s and it continued but developed and transformed. I mentioned earlier that hardware is distinctive in different collections and that you can often define a collection or identify a piece as being part of a collection based on the hardware. So with the Coach Soho hardware, it's a crescent-shaped buckle. That's what identifies the Soho collection. So in those earliest Soho bags, that crescent has looked different. It's evolved a little bit, but it's always been this kind of C-shaped crescent. The Soho collection also came to be identified by these rounded corners on the bottoms of the bags, at least on some of them, and the stitching that was also rounded. And that developed over time. That wasn't always there in the first Soho bags. That came in the early 2000s. As far as this particular Soho flat bag, I saw this bag appear in catalogs in 2004, two years before Coach says it appeared. And I have this one catalog that I screenshotted from, it was a listing for a paper catalog that was for sale. It was poorly done, so I don't know how accurate the information is. It says that it was multiple catalogs. It said the dates were 2000 to 2002, and then it only had a couple of pages scanned in from catalogs, and I don't know which pages went with which catalog, but one of those pages showed the Coach Soho bag. So if those dates are accurate, then it was in catalogs as early as 2002, but I don't know if that's accurate. So I'll say at least 2004. Now the Soho collection that was introduced in the 90s as a lightweight version of the Coach glove tanned leather. But when I talk about the best vintage collections from Coach and when I talk about the Soho collection, 
I'm personally talking more about the Soho's in the 2000s, not so much the 90s. These are made in China bags. It's also interesting to note that a lot of the Soho bags, almost all of them had silver hardware, which was a departure from Coach traditionally using brass. An exception to that was the Coach Soho Mia collection, and this collection had braided handles. The Mia tote from this collection was my dream bag from Coach for a long time. I remember I used to go visit that bag in the Coach store at Columbus Circle when I lived in New York and I just oohed and odd over that bag, but it was like $400, there was no way. I was eating green beans for the dinner at the time because that's what I could afford. So I could not afford a $400 Coach bag. But a few years ago, I did get my hands on one and I'll link that video below in case you're interested in seeing it. Unfortunately, I was kind of disappointed with the condition and I ended up selling it, but doing all this research, my interest has been renewed and I'm looking at some other pieces from from this, from this line. So obviously the Coach Soho flap bag is an iconic piece from this collection. They also made a lot of hobo bags, whether they were little small, kind of handheld or crook of the arm carry or big shoulder bags. I'm looking at one of those right now. And now we're moving to collection number three, the 65th anniversary legacy collection. Now I talked about how Coach uses some words interchangeably. Legacy is one of those. You see them using that word throughout the history of Coach and it means so many different things that it comes to mean nothing. But this collection is known as the 65th Anniversary Legacy Collection. If you're searching for it, I would stick with the 65th Anniversary more than the Legacy because Legacy will bring up lots of other things. This collection was released at their 65th anniversary in 2006. So it is currently two years shy of technically being vintage. However, I think it's close enough and important enough that I wanted to include it in this video. They do have some catalogs that are linked below. The cover of them says 65th anniversary. There are two of those maybe three. But when you go through them, that doesn't mean that every bag in there is part of that 65th anniversary collection. I think that's more, saying that on the cover is more a marketing thing like, hey, it's our anniversary. Here's what defines the 65th anniversary collection. They are very beautiful, supple leathers. Particularly sought after is the whiskey color, which is a vachetta leather, but it's not like Louis Vuitton vachetta. It's a darker color. They have big chunky brass hardware, and one of the things that I found that you will see if you search for something from this collection is when you open the bags and you look at the interior, sometimes you will see some interiors that are a solid color, the signature CCs. Those bags were not part of this collection. They were released later. The official 65th anniversary collection, and the reason it's called the Legacy Collection, is because the interior is the Legacy stripes, those multicolored stripes which, let's go back into coach history here, are, I'm guessing, I didn't see anything that says this, but it seems pretty obvious. They appear to be a remake, a redesign, a reinterpretation of the colorful stripes that Bonnie Cashin put in some of her original coach bags. Probably the most popular bag from this collection is the Alley. It's a shoulder bag. And I also, in my research, learned prices for some of these bags, original prices. And I was, again, mind blown. My brain has been splattered all over this room this week. There was an alligator version of this bag which retailed for $10,000. Some of you may not know this, but Coach still does exotic leathers sometimes, like Crocodile. And that price is not far off from today's prices. Another very, very popular bag from this collection, this might even be more sought after than the Alley because it is very difficult to find one, the Hippie bag. And then there's the Mandy bag. This one retailed for $700. And this is what I found interesting is so many people today complain about coaches' prices having gone up in the last few years, but the prices now are about the same as the prices in 2006, at least with this collection. So I found that really interesting. If you think about it that way, today's prices are a bargain. Oh, another thing that is super confusing about this collection because I haven't found clear information on it is that there will be bags made of these leathers with this heavy brass that have the legacy stripes inside, but there are people online who I found in my research that have said that these some of these bags are not part of the 65th anniversary legacy collection. Even though they're released at the same time, they they're obviously part of the same designs, but they're technically not the 65th anniversary collection. I have no idea what this means. 
The Lee bag is one of those that I've heard this about. It looks like it belongs in that collection. It has the stripes, but I've heard that it wasn't part... I don't get it. It gets confusing. Are you starting to see why it took me a week to get this information together? And there is still so much to learn. There are also these bags with these oversized brass turn lock pieces which I absolutely love. And they have the Legacy Stripe interior, but I haven't found where they fall in that collection. I haven't even seen them in the catalogs, but they're definitely available. They're from that era. The dates are the same. Very cool bags. They also did some bags that have the Legacy Stripe on the outside, like this Legacy Tote. I'm gonna link one of these that's available right now for a fabulous price. And, Collection number five, remember there's still one more that I'll give a quick mention to. Collection number five is the Bleecker Collection. Let me tell you how this is spelled, because I didn't realize there's a C in it. It's B-L-E-E-C-K-E-R. I lived in New York. I was on Bleecker Street many times, did not realize until researching for this video that there's a C in Bleecker. Anyway, this collection was released in 2007, again a little shy of technically being vintage, but close enough and incredible enough that it needed to be mentioned. Similarly to the 65th anniversary collection, you have these amazing, thick, rich leathers, and you also have big, chunky brass hardware. The hardware here is different, though. It's shaped differently. It's sort of rectangular, but then every part of it is rounded. A lot of the bleaker pieces, especially on the straps, will also have not quite braided. It's more of... it's not quite whip-stitched, either. It's these pieces of leather that are woven through grommets. Iconic pieces from the Bleecker line include what seems to be called the Bleecker bag. I haven't found another name for it. This has that tab. Not the first coach bag to have that tab, by the way. That would be the Courier from collection number two that I mentioned. The Bleecker collection is also characterized by the interior. Instead of the Legacy Stripe, the Bleecker collection has the Tattersall lining. And then finally, the sixth collection. This was released in 2012, so definitely not vintage yet. This one is their 70th anniversary collection, and I wanted to give it a quick mention because I talked about the 65th collection. Here they released redesigns of some bags like the Coach Willis. These bags have the dowel on the top, but they also did a lot of color blocking and they did some tassels and different things with the hang tag. I know a lot of people really like the Willis bag, so I wanted to be sure to let you know about that in case you weren't aware of it. We are finally through the collections and there is so much more on each of them that I haven't told you because I know this video is going to be way too long, but that's why I'm thinking I should do a video on each of those collections. And then if you have other collections you'd like to see a video on, let me know and I will certainly consider that as well. In the comments below, I would love it if you would let me know which of these five or six was your favorite collection, or if you have a particular favorite bag from each one, or a favorite vintage bag in your collection overall. Remember, I'll have links for resources like the catalogs and links to each collection in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it, especially if you're still watching at this point. I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.